The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Morning Markets Kickoff with your host, Tommy O'Brien. Now, Tommy O'Brien. Good morning, everybody. I'm Tommy O'Brien coming to you live from TFNN just after 9 a.m. Eastern Time. Eastern Time. I've been on European Time for some time, but adjusting back feels great to be back in the chair. Monday morning, we got a big week ahead of us, and we got the S&P futures slightly in negative territory. Uh, boy, been gone about a week and a half. Had an absolutely outstanding trip in Europe. We'll talk a little bit about that in a moment. Uh, you talk about a market man, relentless to the upside crude, pushing near $95 this morning, higher crude prices. Appreciate my man Jacob filling in for me while I was gone. Teddy Cakestat filling in as well. Feels great to be back in the chair. Uh, get a little bit of rest, get a little energy. I'm energized, ready for this market. And we got a big week, man. We got a Fed week. Made it back in time for Fed week. We got the Fed. We got the Bank of England. We got the Bank of Japan. It's all come and due. This week, let's jump into the markets right now. You got the S&Ps kicking things off down about five points. We zoom in on the slow, on the smaller term action and quite a sell off on Friday, right? I was watching these markets. We had some travel over. I got back here on Friday and I'll walk it through, um, but always keeping my eye on the markets and always entertained in terms of what was going on. Boy, you talk about an exciting market on many fronts, whether you're talking about the markets, we're pushing 4,500 right now, man. That is quite a price tag when you look at where the dollar is, when you look at where crude is, when you look at where rates are, right? What do we got the 10 year at right now? 4.35%. The yield on the 10 year right now, we got the price of crude sitting comfortably at $92. Even this morning, check it out. It's not stopping, man. $92, we just got a handle on crude. You back this up for the last 20 days, excuse me, $77 was the price tag on about August 24th. It's a one-way trip to higher prices. And now we're talking about triple digits is the talk of crude. But markets this morning, S&Ps sitting with a little bit of a sell-off on Friday. We have the auto worker strike going on. We're going to talk about that. We have a Federal Reserve meeting that begins tomorrow, a rate decision expected on Wednesday. We're going to talk about that. You got crude prices at $95. You get the gold contract trading at $19.45 this morning, basically flat. And we jump over to the dollar index this morning. Dollar index sitting at about 105.32. You talk about the dollar, right? Back it up to August. We had a 102 handle. We're sitting at a 105 handle since the extension on Friday. You put that on a daily. And yeah, we're pushing the highs of March on the dollar. You have dollar strength, you pull up the yield, and you're talking about higher yield across the board. Very interesting when you come into a Fed decision. All expectations are that they'll hold where they are right now. That shouldn't be too surprising considering what they've put out there for their messaging, but things getting a little complicated. As you have crude prices trading higher, that's going to put uh, quite a complication into the narrative of inflation. We've all been dealing with the core inflation numbers as numbers have been easing on the headline numbers for inflation, but that's not going to be the case anymore because you take a look at the crude contract on a longer term basis. We've been talking about it on this program, man. You're backing it up to basically pushing the highs of last November, okay? And let's back it up even a little bit further than that because, man, you know, it was getting talked about. A lot of the focus was all on the core numbers, rightfully so. When you're talking about the Fed, we had the war in, the U in Ukraine going on. You had the sell-off on crude, helping things immensely. But boy, we're facing some problems here, man. You're going to start dealing with some comps that are lofty levels when you start coming into October. I mean, check it out, man. You started October prices on crude, folks, at $80. We're pushing 92 right now, okay? Yeah, you chopped around between 80 and 90. But boy, when you start getting into November, okay, you're going to have energy comps in November. November, the next Fed meeting after the one coming up this week, okay, you're going to have to start having headline inflation numbers that are going to be, be that are going to be pushed higher from the energy spectrum, and that has not happened, folks. Basically, since. June of 2022, this market's been trading lower. It traded from June of 2022 all the way until June of 2023. And for the last few months or so, we've pushed higher from $67 to now 
dollars on a percentage basis, folks. What are you talking about, man? You're talking about what? Twenty five dollars on that price tag. Almost a 30 to 40 percent rise in the price of crude over a period of three months. So it's going to get exciting, to say the least. But guess what? We're going to kick some uh, we're going to kick the program off with a little bit of photography from my uh, awesome vacation. So I had the privilege of attending my best friend's wedding out in Mallorca, Spain. Beautiful island. Never been there before. Absolutely amazing. Stayed at a beautiful villa with him as the best man in his wedding. Absolutely privileged. Uh, my best friend, his beautiful wife, Patricia, their beautiful daughter, Alicia. Absolutely amazing time. And uh, let's jump through a couple pictures, man. So we'll start it off, right, with, uh, where are we going to kick things off? Yeah, we'll kick it off with this picture. This was the beginning of the vacation, folks. Tommy, we're sitting at Tampa Airport uh, a week and a half ago almost. He's got his Lightning McQueen backpack. We're all stocked up. Uh, unfortunately, it was just us, the mom, the other kids. It was tough to make it for a week and a half with all of us. So it was just Tommy and I. Good to feel be back home with everybody right now. But that's the beginning of the journey. Okay, and it was quite a journey, man, heading over there. Uh, you jump over to the airplane trip. All right, there it is, Tommy. He's he's kicking back, he's relaxing. I'm gonna show you some of the purchases, man. If you're out there and you're traveling with a young child, folks, it's always an adventure. Tommy did outstanding. So we had a nine hour flight from Miami is where we flew out of. Flew from Miami to Zurich, about a nine hour flight. Miami, the best international airline for what we were doing. Most of the time you'd maybe go through Madrid, Spain, if you're going there. We flew Swiss Air over to Zurich, Tommy, he's kicking back. We had a nice little recliner on the plane uh, going out there. We make it to Mallorca. Some of the beautiful shots out there. Boy, you talk about beauty on this island, folks, in a big way. Let me find that one up there. Uh, absolutely amazing cliffs in terms of what we're dealing with. Coming from Florida, just beauty across the board there in terms of the cliffs that we're dealing with. You jump over to the actual wedding itself. Uh, yeah, a tan suit wedding. Tommy, he was dressed in his finest. Got a nice little vest there. We're out there on the beautiful island of Mallorca. And uh, it wouldn't be a beautiful island in Mallorca if we didn't have our tiger. Tiger, tiger growling out there, Tommy and I, keeping those growls, growls going. Uh, jumping around, pulling up all these pictures here. Yeah, this little happy man. Just great pictures. Happy to share with everybody while I was gone. Uh, Tommy, enjoying getting dressed up. This is probably the most dressed up he's gotten. You know, when you look at being a young kid, not having that opportunity. There's the little man borrowing a hat from one of the guys in the wedding out there. Enjoying the time by the pool out there as well. You jump over to uh, some of the beach shots. I mean, just absolute beautiful scenery out here. Coming from Florida, especially where we're just all flat. Beautiful mountains. Beautiful forest beautiful ocean out us he's out there enjoying his puffs hanging out with his apple juice as well uh the beautiful couple a shot as we jump around as i mentioned my best friend jay his beautiful wife patricia absolutely amazing spot in terms of where they got married uh very happy for those two and their beautiful daughter alicia as well and then what happened was is that flying back what did happen is that so we fly back Mallorca to zurich uh, yes, Mallorca to Zurich on, <clears throat> excuse me, Thursday morning. Plan was to be back here Thursday night and actually do the show Friday. Thursday morning, we show up to Mallorca Airport at about 6 in the morning. Flight delayed. Well, we got stuck in Zurich, long story short, for one extra night. There's beautiful Zurich right by the airport. Tommy and I chilling, hanging out, uh, enjoying a cocktail. But guess what, folks? We're back. We're talking markets. We'll be back in five minutes. We'll dig into it. it. Feels great to be back in the chair. Thanks for joining us. Stay tuned, folks. We've got a lot to talk about. I'll be right back. If you're looking for potential trading setups in the stock market, then Rocket Equities and Options Report is a newsletter you should try. Tommy O'Brien delivers options and equity trades when the markets present them using a combination of fundamentals and technicals. Sign up for Rocket Equities and Options Report today with a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years 
experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com, educating investors. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn, and he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, education investors. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no cash or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. We've got the S&Ps off about three points right now. NASDAQ 100, you're off by about 30. You've got the Dow and the Russell both in positive territory by a few points. Just finishing up that conversation real quick. Gone for a week and a half. Just giving you a quick update. Amazing experience, as I talked about. If you're unfamiliar with where Mallorca is in the world, I was unfamiliar until taking this journey. Uh, so you back things up, of course. We're in beautiful Florida. you got to fly all the way across the Atlantic. You're talking about Spain right here. And there is the island of Mallorca, right next to Ibiza. Ibiza gets a lot of love for their clubs and the beautiful summertime uh, excitement they have. But there is Mallorca, so nice island right off of Spain. You fly into Palma, which is the main airport there. And then we were actually staying in Santani, I believe is how you pronounce it, Santani. And that's about a 45-minute drive from the airport in Palma. And you can see somewhat near the coast there, made it to a couple beautiful beaches. And uh, finishing up, just a couple quick shots that I didn't get to there. My man, Tommy O'Brien, sitting there. Now, this was what I was so fortunate, I mean, on many fronts there, is that they had the wedding. They, a, they rented a beautiful villa out there to host the wedding at. And then I was fortunate with the couple to stay at the villa while we were there and check it out, man. That was our view every morning, waking up, looking over the beautiful ocean, looking over the beautiful pool. You can't get much better than that, right, in a big way. And a couple more pictures I wanted to share. There's a couple. Tommy and I, again, looking over that beautiful coast as well. Tommy with his stars in there as well. And the last one I want to get up there, they had a beautiful white party. So a white party the night before the wedding. Uh, kind of like the pre-party for the wedding, right? Everyone's there traveling. They had 100 guests there. His beautiful wife, Patricia, she is German. So you had a bunch of her family there speaking German. Uh, Tommy, a bunch of kids running around, had a great time. Beautiful white party over the pool. The next day was the wedding. Uh, feels great to be back, though, as I mentioned. And, yeah, a little rest and relaxation, folks. It's important in life. Get you all charged up and uh, ready to get back into the action. And that's where we are right now. And with that in mind, let's kick things off. And where do we kick it off with? $95 crude, man. I was keeping my eye on the price of crude, I tell you, while I was over there. But boy, you talk about relentless. We kicked it off at the beginning, beginning of the program, and now the conversation is we're talking about triple digits. And as I mentioned to kick off the program, where does this stop, man? You talk about a trend line, right? An ode to our man Bud Rolfs, the channel master. Folks, I don't, I don't got to put lines on this chart to show you where these channels go. It is a well-defined channel line, and you're talking about a pretty tight channel, right? Almost tighter than I just drew it. 45 degrees to the upside, crude pushing $92. You back this up a little bit further on a daily, that is quite an acceleration. Now, what I will say here is, 
and I was talking about this a little bit in the last programs I was doing. I was out of here. I think the last show I did was Tuesday the 5th. Okay, so we flew out Wednesday the 6th. We arrived in Mallorca Thursday the 7th, and we were planned to stay there for a week until Thursday the 14th. And as I mentioned, we were missed our connection. And boy, this is an adventure too. I, I, I got to do it. Why not? So I, I told you, I show up Thursday morning, September 14th, this past Thursday. We got a taxi picking, picking Tommy and I up from the villa in Santani at about 5.45 in the morning, their time, okay, which is six hours ahead is what they are. So they're six hours ahead of us right now. Um, six hours is the time that they're pushing. So it's 5.45 a.m. in the morning, it was about 23 hours door to door was the travel time, okay? And then we added a day on the way home, so that was a 47 hour journey from our door at the villa in Mallorca until I got to the door home here in Florida. Tommy was a trooper man, two and a half years old, I tell you, a trooper and a half, he had an outstanding time. But so we show up at Mallorca and the flight's delayed, we missed our connection, sprinted to the airport in Zurich, missed it by five minutes, uh, a devastating moment for a moment, knowing that we were basically stuck there for the day. Tommy was, you know, struggling a bit like all of us when you're traveling a lot. But it ended up being a great deal because I got to see Zurich a bit. And one of those photographs I showed you, to pull it up again, let me find that photo real quick, in Zurich. So this is right near Zurich Airport, okay? And what was so cool, so we all know Zurich, right? Swiss banking. Uh, they got plenty of money over in the Swiss banking system, not in Credit Suisse anymore, but in UBS. My best friend Jay actually works for UBS over in Switzerland. So we get stuck in Zurich, and he was still over in Mallorca for a few days for like a little mini honeymoon after everyone left the villa. And what was so cool was is that they have a full convention center, shopping area, hotels, literally two minutes from the hotel. Uh, excuse me, from the airport. So what we were able to do is I put Tommy in the stroller. Our bags were already checked through. Thankfully, traveling with Tommy, I had stocked up. We had everything we needed and we got to explore. And it was like almost a little mini Times Square type feel. Stores everywhere, restaurants, um, an amazing experience. We were stuck there for a day, but all things considered, right? A lot worse places you could get stuck than Zurich, Switzerland for an evening. We got to see it. Uh, make the most of your opportunities, folks. That's what I'll say. You know, many times people would be so stressed out. You're stuck in a place with a two-year-old for an extra day. But guess what? It was actually a good thing. Once we got settled, we got to enjoy our night, have a fun time, explore the city, uh, make the most of those opportunities. But what I was mentioning was we were looking at this A to B, C to D possible in this crew prices before I left. So I was only out of here you know, when crew was pushing about, where's September 5th? There it is, 86 bucks, right? And I remember talking about this. The crude had just gone about $17.50, okay, from about 67.50. That would be your A point. You're talking about a B point up here at basically $85 on the dot. The high there is 84.89, okay? So we'll talk about that's a $17.50 A to B leg. You pull right back to the 382 and check out how you accelerate right above that B point. So you had volume there of about 447,000 contracts. And look at these days, doesn't quite get to 447, okay? But you had three mammoth accelerations. Uh, uh, August, 34, August 31st, you trade up almost $2.50. The next day, September 1st, you trade up again about $2.50. The next day you get a bar. Within four days, folks, you trade from 8153 to 87.50. Now, the $17.50 to get to the point here, okay, that would bring you to $95. Okay, so that is the projection right now on the crude. It's a nice round number. We got our man Basil Chapman coming up next. We got our man Steve Rhodes. He's done some traveling as well. He is back today. We're all back. We're ready. It's Fed Week. Uh, we're all back, but $95, $95 is the projection there. Uh, a lot of people talking about $100 crude justifiably with the move that this is in right now, but $95, you put it on that chart, it's an A to B, C to D, straight line move. I mean, look how well defined they are too. From the A point to the B point, a nice 3A2 pullback, and then you accelerate higher. So we'll see where we run into on $95. Backing this out a bit, and as I mentioned, let's back it out even a little further than that. On a three-year weekly, Okay, you're going to start running into the highs of last November, which is just uh, almost $94 in November 7th. 
And then you're talking about basically that same price point on October of 93.64. So that seems like where crude's heading. You're only talking about a dollar 75 from where we're at right now. Crude's up a buck 15 today. And yeah, it's a brave new world, man. Higher prices at the crude pump. I wonder what Chairman Powell is going to have to say when it comes time for the press conference Wednesday at 2.30 p.m. Eastern time. I'm sure he'll have a few questions about the prices of energy going up as we come into uh, the Fed meeting on Wednesday. And then we fast forward to the next meeting in November. All expectations are they probably pause here. That's what they've put out to the market. But boy, you got yields, right? Let's jump to yields real quick. We have the 10-year, 4.35%. How about the two-year, 5.07% on the two-year basis. All right, folks, we're coming back for the open. Stay tuned. We're going to talk some auto workers as they are on strike, as we all know. Stay tuned, folks. We'll be right back. The Gold Report. As a precious metal, gold is still king. It continues to hold the most effective safe haven and hedging properties across the global major trading hubs of the London OTC market, the U.S. futures market, and the Shanghai Gold Exchange. The Gold Report. Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly gold report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, the South African Rand, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. The Gold Report. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Subscribe to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report newsletter now at TFNN.com. Currencies, commodities, and bond markets are as important as ever right now with how they're driving the volatility in equity markets across the globe, which is why it's a great time to try out Teddy Kegstat's Tiger Forex Report. Teddy Kegstat breaks down the Forex markets every Monday using his 30-plus years of experience as a trading veteran of futures, Forex, stocks, and options. Teddy releases his weekly Tiger Forex Report every Monday morning with coverage of all the major currency pairs, including the dollar index, the euro dollar, pound dollar, dollar Swiss, dollar yen, as well as many more, and he also has weekly coverage of the crude oil market and the 30-year T-bonds as they both influence Forex markets tremendously. When you sign up for the Tiger Forex Report, you also gain instant access to Teddy's 60-minute webinar archive he just hosted, Forex Strategies and Fundamentals, What is Behind the Tiger Forex Report. For all the details and to start your 30-day Tiger Forex Report subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern for free. Each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Welcome back, folks. We got the S&Ps off about five points right now. NASDAQ 100 off about 39. Dow only indexing the positive right now by about 23 points. You hear my voice getting over it a little bit still. You travel for 48 hours, man. It, uh, it wears on you for sure, especially when you're traveling with a two-year-old. Uh, but Tommy, he made it easy, folks, I tell you. And so on the way there, mixing in some of uh, the last week and a half with the market, we're going to be talking about the auto workers in just one second. But on the way there, we took off at about 730 at night. We're talking about a week and a half ago, 
And so that's the overnight. We show up in Europe in the morning. Tommy slept great for about six hours of the nine hour flight. Coming back, he's a little anxious in terms of how that would go, how his schedule would adjust. And what's so cool is when you go over to Europe, it's six hours forward. And so that one's a little tough because maybe you're flying the overnight, maybe you don't sleep too well, you show up in the morning, you're exhausted. Coming back, if you can just make it where you stay up long enough, then you almost reset it instantly, I'll tell you. So we left Mallorca at about six in the morning, Thursday, okay? And let's just say we didn't get jet lagged, as it, uh, excuse me, um, we, let's say we didn't miss our connection. We left at six in the morning, but remember, that's about midnight Eastern time, okay? Because we're six hours ahead. So for all intents and purposes, when we're flying back to the US, we're basically taking off at midnight Eastern time. And by the time we catch our flight in Zurich, land in Miami, we're landing at about 5 p.m. Eastern time, Miami time, the same day because of the way the time works. But feeling to us, that's almost midnight on Europe time that we're doing it, right? Tommy was a trooper, man. He slept for about four hours on the plane and he lasted until 9.30. We had to drive from Miami back, so I landed about 10.30 back in um, at our house because I had about a three and a half hour drive from Miami after flying all that here. Tommy made it till about 9.30 at night Eastern time, okay? Well, we woke up in Zurich at about eight, seven or eight in the morning Zurich time, which is like waking up at two in the morning East Coast time. So it would have been like if your two year old wakes up, I'll do it this way. It would have been like in Zurich, right? If we wake up at eight in the morning and I say to Tommy, I need you to stay up until almost four in the morning, Tommy, I'm gonna let you take a big nap, but boy, that's gonna be the easiest way to reset your schedule. He was a tired man, man, but he did it. Uh, interesting, nonetheless. I uh, may, you know, can't help but be on my mind, man, uh, being away that long. But guess what? As we're gone, we got quite the story going on in the automakers, right? So, as usual, the market gets ahead of things, okay? Market was aware that this was coming. September 14th was the deadline. These markets sell off. You got Ford. Basically, uh, beginning of July, the acceleration really begins to lower prices. You had crude, uh, excuse me, you had crude. You had Ford pushing about 1542. You accelerated, lost about $4, that price tag, man. You're talking about almost a 25% haircut for the price of these equities back to where you were in May. But nonetheless, we're trading right now down about 1.4% for Ford. You jump over to GM, you're down about half a percent right now. You see the sell-off they had, about a 20% decline from where they were beginning of July from where you traded to the beginning of September. And we've seen this play out. It's so interesting in terms of how it's gonna happen. Nobody knows what's gonna happen here. But you add in the amount of strikes we're getting, you add in the compensation when you see UPS workers, et cetera, getting quite a pay hike, that's gonna be on the GM front. These car companies have made a lot of money in the last few years, folks, okay? And the whole conversation about CEO pay versus worker pay, it's finally catching up to a certain degree. Okay, now what's so interesting is how this is gonna play out in terms of their strategy. And I got a couple of articles up here. So first we're gonna talk about the journal article. And just we're just gonna to touch on these because I could spend I could spend the whole week, right? Probably talking about a simultaneous strike for all the three big automakers. This has never happened before, okay? Union leaders launched a targeted approach that hits the automakers simultaneously but risks uneven pain for the workers. So it's gonna be interesting to see how strong the line is. Can they hold? Can they hold that line? Easier said than done, man. All right, people got bills. That's the bottom line. And if things seem unfair, that's where cracks can show up. So it's gonna be interesting to see how this plays out, how strong the will is of those workers. And uh, it's it starts basically right now. So the strike, which targets three assembly plants, plants in three different states, is the first time the 88-year-old union has staged simultaneous walkouts at all three automakers, okay? But here's the deal. It's an unusual deployment of a rolling, slow-burn approach designed to stymie the car company's factory operations as a way to gain leverage for the union. So what they've done here, okay, is that... Let me find the line here as I get it. They've... They've started striking at certain plants, okay? Meanwhile, they're not striking everywhere, okay? 
And let me get the exact quote. There's so much to read in here. I, I probably should spend a whole program on this at some point. So they have three different plants at three different states. They've threatened walkouts that additional plants could come. And with little notice, the longer the negotiations drag on. So it's going to escalate. As opposed to just being, we're out, everybody's out. They're having a slow burn is how they're going, okay? Uh, and this is where you're going to see some of workers probably be a little bit worried how that's going to play out. And this is one quote. If you're going to take out one plant, take us all out. Let us all stand together, right? That is one worker, Brooke Jesse, who works at a Ford assembly plant in Ohio that produces commercial vehicles. We all have to feel the pain. So imagine if you're the employee that is stopping, and meanwhile, other employees are technically on strike, but they're still allowing their production plants to run, which means you're still working and you're still getting paid. You're not feeling the pain. Going to be interesting to see how this plays out with that aspect of things, okay? Now, you get back to an article that Bloomberg has this morning talking about how auto execs misread the UAW ahead of the historic strike. Now, what's getting talked about a lot this weekend, I was hearing it, is that the number out there already is that the auto workers are talking about giving the employees a 20% plus pay raise. In any other world, folks, that would probably get it done. Uh, but this is not like any other world. We are in exceptional times, as they say. And I'm not sure if 20% is fair, okay? Because here's the thing. The auto workers, <clears throat> excuse me, are talking about potentially a 40% pay increase over the next four years and a 32-hour work week. Well, the 32-hour work week, that's its own conversation, okay? And that's gonna get people heated on both sides of things. I've said this on the program before. Question everything, okay? Why are we working five days a week and we're off two? Why isn't everybody working four days and off three? Why aren't we working three days and we're off four, right? You accept the norm, but it's a good thing to always question the norms, folks, okay? Because, you know, you see something like this and a lot of people will say, ah, they're, they're being lazy. They just, they don't want to work. Why, 40 is 40 because that's been the norm forever, right? Monday through Friday you work, you rest Saturday and Sunday. Nonetheless, so that's its own conversation. But let's focus just on the 40% number, which you're gonna get a lot of conversation over, okay? 40% pay increase over the next four years. Folks, if you're talking about in the year 2027, you'd get a 40% pay increase. I would argue the prices are probably up 25% already right now. Okay, so we'll finish this conversation up, but they are miles away from where they need to be to get a deal. We'll talk about it when we get back, folks. Stay tuned. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Will the S&P 500 continue to climb? For bold trades on U.S. large cap stocks in either direction, trade SPXL, SPUU, or SPXS. Direction's daily S&P 500 bull and bear leveraged ETFs. Direction Leveraged ETFs. An investor should carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risks, charges, and expenses before investing. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a fund's prospectus and summary prospectus, call 866-476-7523 or visit directioninvestments.com. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus should 
should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. TFNN has just launched their new trading room, The Tiger's Den. Hosted at Discord, TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. And now they are expanding their reach with The Tiger's Den. Available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. In The Tiger's Den, you can look over the shoulders of Tom O'Brien and the other TFNN hosts while they analyze charts during their live Tiger TV programs and join an interactive trading community with hundreds of members exchanging ideas. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day, even at night and on the weekends. The Tiger's Den at Discord is accessible on mobile or tablets as well, so it's always at your reach. To sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders, just visit the front page of TF. NN.com. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Welcome back, folks. We got the S&Ps chopping around. We're negative by about three points right now. You got the NASDAQ 100. We'll put it back on a five-minute time frame. Catching a little bit of a bid on the open there. We get two flat prices. You get the Dow giving it up a bit. All the market's pretty calm right now ahead of uh, a pretty important week. When you're talking about central banks, you're talking about our Fed on Wednesday, and uh, you're talking about crude prices. Just under $92 right now. We jump over to the price of gold. You're sitting flat at 1946, and you got to keep your eyes on notes and bonds. A little bit of a recoil from where we were at 109.08. But, boy, you're talking about lower price, higher yield, coming into that Fed decision and jumping back a bit to some of the conversations about the auto workers here. <clears throat> and some good takes in the den. <clears throat> Excuse me. Talking about, you know, whether it was the auto workers that created that 40-hour work week, right? Um, whether it was Dolly Parton that must pay for her sins working 9 to 5. We all kid. Um, but... It's okay to question the norms, folks. You know, I mean, it's, it's you know, for some reason, anyway, for what it's worth, check out this chart. You're talking about, now, rightfully so, okay, the labor side of things, this article talks about, they've had very little room to uh, negotiate because the car companies have been in trouble for a while. Well, that's not the case anymore, man. They have been making uh, a lot of money, to put it lightly. Check out, this is the average hourly auto wage in real wages dropped 30% since 2003, okay? And this is, you look at the private sector in the black here, in terms of the average hourly auto wage versus the private sector, a steady incline, as is usually the case, and look at where you've gone for these auto workers. You're talking about being at 46 bucks, yeah, well above where the private sector was, okay? But you're at 33 from 46, that's a 30% cut in real wages since 2003, at a time when those companies are now uh, making Boku bucks. Now, I'm gonna give it both sides, okay? Uh, where is it? There it is. Article from Bloomberg, this is an old one from last month, okay? UAW demand would add $80 billion to US car maker labor costs, okay? Internal calculations, these are internal calculations, okay? Everybody's got a bias here. Talking about raising the cost to $150 an hour. We've seen this play out before, all right? You make bad deals with the union, it goes bad for everybody in terms of the automakers, uh, if you're old enough, folks. And boy, it's, it's, it's wild that I'm getting into the conversation that now I'm old enough, right? Uh, but if you're old enough, you remember the stories, right? Where they couldn't fire people, they would just pay people to sit in a room and do nothing because the labor contracts they had with the unions ended up making it very difficult for those companies to do business. We're facing similar things right now where you have Tesla non-union, okay? So you're gonna see a difference with union, non-union. Bottom line is these companies are making a lot of money and back to the number which is gonna be the 40%, okay? Because this is gonna get a lot of the headlines. The car companies right now are offering about 21%, I think is the number. 
the auto workers are looking for 40 percent and listen it always goes deeper the devil is always in the details okay i'm sure there are many things at stake beyond the headline hourly wage when you talk about the ability to transfer workers the ability to close plants uh vacation time sick time all of that stuff matters okay but look at the 40 percent and the, 40, the key is here, and this is always what happens, is it's what happened with the UPS contract, okay? The numbers that were talked about are at the end of the contract, basically. As in, the 40% number is what they will be making four years into the future. I'm trying to find that again. Here it is, 40% pay increases over the next four years. Folks, I would argue with you that we are probably 25% above for cost of living where we were about three years ago prior to COVID, okay? So if we're 25% over where we were the last few years, then that means that's only about a 15% increase, and I'm generalizing everything, okay? But that's only a 15% increase over the next four years. Inflation is still raging, and that is saying by the year 2027, because the 25% pay increase right now would just be a catch-up. Okay, that would just be a catch up to what's been going on, the shock of higher prices across the board, whether it's rents, right, whether it's housing prices, whether it's groceries across the board. And some of that is abating, but we know we're still dealing with numbers 4% being kind. Maybe we're at a 4% inflation number right now being kind. You start adding in crude prices, pushing 90 to $100, that headline CPI number is going to get pushed back up. So maybe we're talking 4 to 5%. You take 15% over the next four years, and what are you talking about? That's maybe a 3 to 3.5% 3 pay increase over the next four years. Now, that's a generalization of somewhat cherry-picking some numbers, but that's my interpretation of when you take some of this data, okay, and you hear that they're going to give a 20% raise, that's what the auto workers are offering, and in any other time, that would be quite a raise. We are not living in ordinary times, folks. We have quite the cost of living that has increased, and that is over a four-year period, pushing 40%, and uh, and yeah, so it all matters. And, and there's two sides of it because we've seen how it play out, how it plays out in terms of you can't give unions everything they want, and the unions can't give the companies everything they want. The key is compromise in anything in life, okay? And it's going to be difficult to get a compromise here when they're so far apart. And these articles talk about it's a gamble, like anything, folks. Okay, it's a gamble on the side of the companies. It's a gamble on the side of the workers. Because if they really hold out here and then they have to backtrack and get something to the tune of 20 to 25 percent that was offered at the beginning, uh, that's going to set up a precedent for other union members that makes it very difficult to go forward. And here it is, right? If the workers sacrifice for months, throwing their lives and others into disarray, and it does, folks, okay? My mom worked for Verizon, which was a union, is a union company. Um, they're trying to do away with that. But she was on strike at many different portions when the contracts would come up. Fortunately, she was okay. She had some savings. Uh, she didn't have young kids at home anymore when those strikes were really going on. But she saw many workers having to make very important decisions for their lives, for their kids' lives, for their families. It becomes difficult. This is not simple. Everybody has their own priorities. So if you do that and then you have to accept something much closer to what they've been offering, that could serve as just the sort of, sort of cautionary tale man managers try to use to try and dissuade workers from unionizing in the first place. On the heels of the UPS deal, though, I don't know if this is going to be a cautionary tale anytime soon. If things drag on, anything is possible. Um, but we are living in interesting times, to put it lightly. So you get all three that are on strike. And as I mentioned, look how things go forward because it's an interesting con um, part of the conversation in terms of not everyone is striking at once on all the plants, even though there are strikes going on at the major three auto workers all simultaneously for the first time in the 88 year history of the union. Uh, yeah, how about that, right? All right, and so we take a look. Let's see how those car companies are trading. A lot of this priced in, folks. Oh, I say that? <laughs> look at that. Just like that, Ford, off another percent since I started the conversation. Somebody out there selling, look at this, GM. Market's worried, and rightfully so, man. Okay, this is not going to end anytime soon. They are leaps and bounds away from each other right now, and you get the car companies even selling off this morning with Ford, GM, off about 2 2.5%, pushing the lows 
of Friday morning as well. All right, stay tuned, folks. We've got one more segment, jumping around to some of the FANG stocks. Amazon, up by half a percent. The big dog, Apple catches a bid. Check that out, up 1.3%. Microsoft shares, flat this morning. Google shares, up about half a percent. One more segment, folks. Don't go away, I'll be right back. The Gold Report. As a precious metal, gold is still king. It continues to hold the most effective safe haven and hedging properties across the global major trading hubs of the London OTC market, the U.S. futures market, and the Shanghai Gold Exchange. The Gold Report. Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly gold report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, the South African Rand, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. The Gold Report. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Subscribe to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report newsletter now at TFNN.com. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Welcome back, folks. S&P's off by about three, NASDAQ 100. As has been the case, strength, right? Quite the pullback on Friday, man. But you got NASDAQ 100 and positive prices. We saw Apple catching a bid right now. That'll do it. Apple pulls back from, look at this volatility, man. Up to 179, you give it up. Back to 177, we check in on crude. Trading at 91.47 right now. Gold contract at 19.46. And we got to check in on notes and bonds right now with the yield on the 10-year. Uh, what are we talking about right now? Let's pull it up as we talk about. I think we're about 4.35%. Let's check it out. Where are we at? 4.34%, the yield on the 10-year coming into an important Fed week. And I'm going to jump to a little bit of IPO action. So Instacart, I've talked about this one before. Man, I was a darling, darling customer for Instacart during the pandemic shortly after. Uh, I had a fiancé that was pregnant at the time. We're going through, through COVID. Then we have a small child. Needless to say, time was a commodity that I was willing to pay for. And when you think about how much money you spend on groceries, folks, especially for a family, right? We've got a family of five. Boy, we're crushing probably 300 bucks a week. Easy. That's 1,200 bucks a month. Easy. Okay. 
and I say easy, 300 bucks, man, sometimes you have bigger weeks. That is itself, folks, what, about $14,000 a year in groceries? You go through Instacart, you're paying a 10 to 20% premium, sometimes even more. Be careful of this company, okay? Because not often do you have a company that gets valued and they cut their valuation multiple times and then they say, you know what, man, maybe we just gotta go to the public before we gotta cut it again. They're talking about a $9 billion valuation for their share sale on Monday. Well, guess what? There were probably many people like myself that were spending money on this app, Instacart, during the pandemic and beyond that I haven't used Instacart probably in a year or two, folks. And, and maybe if really push came to shove, you know, I got the app, I can do it again. They've been trying to shove some phenomenal deals in front of me with notifications on my phone. Save $40 off your next order. So that's not bad. You'd be surprised how pricey it is, though, when you make big orders on Instacart, okay? Now, here's the kicker here. Number one. Oh, that was quick, man. Okay. Be careful, folks. They were valued at $40 billion at one point, and now they're pushing nine. So be careful. Folks, feels great to be back. We got everybody back. We got our man Basil. We got our man Larry. Steve Rhodes coming up this afternoon. Tom O'Brien today as well. I'll talk to you tomorrow, folks. Have a great Monday.